Yo, what's going on, guys, man? It's your boy, Mikael Naps, a.k.a. Mr. Sniper, but man, today's video, man, we got few more cop gets fired and sued. If you guys are new, man, hit that like button, subscribe, and share, man. If you guys want to go watch the original video, if you guys want to watch this video and not my reaction, the original link will be down below in the description. Let's go. What and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers vehicle searches, excessive force, and resisting, and is brought to us by Lackluster's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Morgan and Morgan. Um, hey, shout out, shout out to Morgan and Morgan, but we're not here from Morgan and Morgan. So. 2021, <clears throat> Officer Teddy Dyer, Officer Candace Miller, and Sergeant David Myrick of the East Ridge Police Department in Tennessee responded to a call for a well child check at the residence of Haley Sherrard. When they arrived at the home, they found Haley's mother, Angel Sherrard, along with her son, Devin, in a vehicle in front of the house. Officer Dyer approached the vehicle from the right passenger side, and the encounter that followed was captured on his body camera. Hey. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hey, do you live here? Um, my daughter's living here. Is she? In, yeah. the, in this, is that 893? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Right, hang on one second for me, okay? Something wrong? Well, we got called to check on a child. What well, child? I don't know. They didn't tell us. They just said do a welfare check. From when? Like, what did they say? I don't know. We'll go up and knock. Is that your daughter coming now? Yeah. What's her name? I right, going up to uh, the door. It's, it's one of these. The where the where the where the welfare um thing. Well, how old is the child? Two years old. Is there a two year old that lives here? Yeah. Okay. I bet it was um. Uh, four mic three, seven golf four. Why are you running my tag? Because I smell marijuana. You mm. smell marijuana. Yes. Because you smell marijuana that gives you the right to run my tag. No, only that I'm going to search car. You're not going to search anything. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. No, you're not. I promise you. You are not going to break my only, rights right now. You're about to get your rights in the back of my car. Well, if that's what you want to do because you, you're going to get in real when you do. Because I haven't done anything. I haven't violated any rules or anything. You just sit there and talk to me. and, and to that, See, the thing is, is why in some states that, that is illegal? Because I really feel like marijuana, I really feel like that should really be legal in every state. It's a plant, and I feel like it helps... It helps uh, calm down people. It really it helps you. Like it helps you. You calm and you good. I really feel like that should really be illegal in every state. You know what I'm saying? It really should be legal, but I don't know why some states won't sign off on, on it that it should be legal. It's a plant. But somehow, you know what I'm saying? They got cigarettes and all that. Cigarettes can literally, cigarettes can kill you. Marijuana really can't. You know what I'm saying? You're I am going to search your car. And you're running my tag. I am going to search your car. I'm not doing anything to sitting out here waiting for I my daughter care. to come back I don't out. care. Your car is going to be searched. And if you interfere with my search, I will put you in the car. Okay, and I will take you to you jail. Okay, you go ahead and you violate my rights then. Okay, put Let's your hands on that. the car. You violate my rights. Put your hands on the car. Officer Dyer claims he is going to run the vehicle's tags and search it because he smells marijuana. Tennessee is one of the minority of states that, mm -hmm. as of the date of writing... States with legal medicating marijuana. This is the light green. Okay. States with legal marijuana and recreation. So, in these states, is not legal. Every state, every state, marijuana should be legal. Whether either you can, you know, saying it should be, or you can, you can, um, it should be legal everywhere. Should, I'm talking about it, it, even if it's medical, it should be medical. Then it should be like recreational where saying people can like buy it at like marijuana stores or something like that, you know, saying at a you know, saying that like at a shop. It should be legal everywhere, you know what I'm saying? This episode have not legalized or decriminalized either recreational or medical marijuana, although the state has legalized hemp and C B D oil. Accordingly, in the nineteen seventy six hey, case of State versus Hughes, the Supreme Court of Tennessee held that the odor of marijuana coming from a vehicle constitutes probable cause to believe that the vehicle contains contraband marijuana. In the twenty twenty two case of State versus Hampton, the Court of Criminal Appeals of Tennessee rejected an argument that with the legalization 
legalization of hemp, the quote-unquote plain smell of marijuana, no longer established probable cause for a warrantless vehicle search, as the smell of marijuana is indistinguishable from the smell of hemp, concluding that, now quoting, until our Supreme Court or our legislature determines otherwise, the smell of marijuana continues to establish probable cause for the warrantless search of an automobile. Accordingly, if a court believed Officer Dyer's assertion that he smelled marijuana, it is highly likely that it would determine he had the probable cause necessary to search Ms. Sherrard's vehicle. Now, as to the constitutionality of running Ms. Sherrard's tags, courts have consistently concluded that officers do not violate the Fourth Amendment by searching for an individual's license plate in a police database, even when they do not have any reason to suspect any sort of criminality. As the Supreme mm. Court explained in the 1986 case of... Hey, so if, he, if he's saying, uh, saying he was smelling marijuana, like, like, he, like he can't check it? He can't like check the car? I mean, not check the car. Um, you know, saying the 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 plate tags. He can, he can't do that. New York versus class, quote, a citizen does not surrender all the protections of the Fourth Amendment by entering an automobile. Nonetheless, the state's intrusion into a particular area, whether in an automobile or elsewhere, cannot result in a Fourth Amendment violation unless the area is one in which there is a constitutionally protected, reasonable expectation of privacy. The court then held that an officer did not violate the Fourth Amendment by reaching into the mm -hmm. passenger compartment of a vehicle stopped for a traffic violation to move papers obscuring its vehicle identity identification number, or VIN, or VIN, reasoning that individuals do not have reasonable expectations of privacy in their VINs, as they are required by law to be located in a place ordinarily in plain view from the exterior of the automobile. Applying this and mm. other precedents, courts okay. have generally concluded that there is no reasonable expectation of privacy in a license plate number, and that officers may therefore run tags of a vehicle in plain view without implicating the Fourth Amendment. For instance, in the 2006 okay. case okay, of so he, U.S. So run the play tags he just can't violate the fourth amendment if i'm getting that right i'm probably getting it wrong people in the comments probably gonna be talking shit I mean, it is what it is best versus ellison the sixth circuit mm. court of appeals which has jurisdiction over tennessee determined that quote so long as the officer had a right to be in a position to observe the defendant's license plate any such observation and corresponding use of the information on the plate does not violate the fourth amendment as such a court would almost certainly find that officer dyer was within his constitutional authority to run Ms. sherrard's plates regardless of whether or not he actually smelled any marijuana yo what are you you're gonna put you're, you're, you're Said, put put your hands on the car. You're arresting me for put what? your hand back up. Hey, don't you put your f mm. hey, no, yeah. hey, hey, I'm so dizzy right now. He just drank my f Oh my god. Oh my god. Damn, oh yeah, and then and he they blurted out. Damn. See, I feel like sometimes cops they they really have to just be calm and respectful because I feel like the public, if we're being like like this, like being rude and like that, like they they're not gonna calm down. Like you have to like, you have to be the person to calm down, de-escalate the situation. I'm saying just calm down and stuff like that. I don't think he. I I, I think he just detained her. I think he's just trying to see if, if he, you know, what I'm saying he probably gonna switch the car and see if there's like marijuana. Cause remember he said he smelled it. I don't think he's gonna arrest her. I just think unless she's like unless she's like I'm saying like. Resisting arrest or something like that. I don't think she was. I think he just detaining her to see if she has marijuana in the car and then he probably gonna charge her with like something like that. Go on, shut up! I broke it! Get in the car! Get in the car! Oh my god! Why I you can't! I'm too big! Sucks to be you! Stop Get in the car! Me. What? Why are they pushing her like that? Like, help her get in the car. Why are you just pushing her, bro? She says she's too big. Help her get in the car. Or just have her stand. If she can't, if she can't, you know, send fit in the cop car, just have her stand right there. Why are you like, like, why are you guys being rude and all this? Just help her get in the car. Like, come on now, bro. I didn't get do it. it. You know, fucking police talking about put, put fucking protect and serve. Like, come on, protect and serve. Nigga, do something. Man, you're a woman. You're going to treat me like this? You're going to get tased. Get in, get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. I'm getting in the car. Okay, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, 
Yeah, Although it is okay. difficult to tell exactly what happened from the body camera footage, and Lackluster reported that the other officer's body camera footage had been quote-unquote purged, Ms. Sherrard's attorney detailed the officer's use of force against her in a federal lawsuit stemming from this encounter. According to the complaint, Officer Dyer grabbed Ms. Sherrard, slammed her face onto the partially opened window of her vehicle, banged her head onto her vehicle, and handcuffed mm. her. The lawsuit also asserts that Officer Dyer then pushed her against the back of a police vehicle and jerked her head backward by grabbing her hair after she had been handcuffed. A few moments later, See, after... This is why people don't really like cops and they don't respect them. It's because it is. Just because they have a badge in the gun, they think they can use their power to their... And they, they, can, they, 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 they can abuse their power to the point where they just do whatever they want. Banging her head on the window, this and that, pulling her hair, pushing her in the car, telling her to get in the car. She she can't get in the car. Like, bro, you have to help her get into the car. They're talking about being in the car. They're gonna tase you. Like, come on. After Miss Gerard cool. was escorted That's to the police cool. vehicle, Officer Anna Simmons arrived on the scene, and Sergeant Myrick, quote unquote, drive stunned Miss Gerard with her taser as she struggled to get in the vehicle. The term drive stun refers to holding a taser device against the target without firing the projectiles, which is intended to cause pain but not incapacitation. Despite the fact that Miss Gerard explicitly told the officers that she did not believe she was able to get into the back of the vehicle due to her I'm size, sorry. officer. Simmons chose to leave this fact out of her police report, which Lackluster obtained and included in his video. According to Officer Simmons' narrative, now quoting, Sherrard was escorted to the police unit, however, continued her refusal of compliance and would not get in the vehicle. Police continued to give numerous lawful orders to get into the police unit, and she did not comply. Police drive-stunned Sherrard to gain compliance, which was successful. Now, as we've discussed before here on ATA, whether or not the use of force during an arrest or investigatory stop of a free citizen is quote-unquote excessive is analyzed under the so-called reasonableness standard of the Fourth Amendment, which guarantees citizens the right to be secure in their persons against unreasonable seizures of the person. As the Supreme Court explained in the landmark 1989 case of Graham v. Connor, although, now quoting, Fourth Amendment jurisprudence has long recognized that the right to make an arrest or investigatory stop necessarily carries with it the right to use some degree of physical coercion or threat thereof to affect it, any use of force must be reasonable under the totality of the circumstances. In the Graham case, the court noted that, quote, the reasonableness of a particular use of force must be judged from the perspective of a reasonable officer on the scene, rather than with the 2020 vision of hindsight, and ultimately identified three factors like, that- I know you can use force, but like, why are you like, you pushing her, you being rude, you saying this, get in the car, you saying, the, the lady that was arrested saying, I'm too big, to get in here and I'm too big in here and then she's talking about the cop going, the female cop going to say sucks to be you or like at least help her if your job is to protect and serve the damn country or your city or your state whatever it is like help her bro why cops are always rude and shit and then they wonder court should consider when evaluating the constitutionality of a use of force, stating that, now quoting, because the test of reasonableness under the Fourth Amendment is not capable of precise definition or mechanical application, its proper application requires careful attention to the facts and circumstances of each particular case, including the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. Applying the three so-called Graham factors to Ms. Sherrard's arrest, she would have a strong argument that the officers used excessive force in conducting the arrest and in tasing her when she struggled to get into the vehicle, as it is unclear for what crime she was even arrested for in the first place. And although it is possible that she struggled some against the officer's use of force against her, she was not active. See, see, see that's the thing is like, the, but what, why was a male cop arresting her for? There's no, she didn't commit a crime. She didn't do nothing. All he said, all he said, he what well, he smelled marijuana. He said he smelled marijuana. You know what I'm saying? He could have just detained her and then see. You know what I'm saying? He didn't really have to put her in a cop car. What crime did she commit? She didn't. She didn't commit any crime. He said he. The cop just said he smelled marijuana, and then like resisting or yes, posing a safety threat to the officers when she was tased or slammed into the vehicle. Additionally, even if Ms. Sherrard did struggle during her arrest, she would still have a legitimate argument that pulling her hair after she was handcuffed and banging her head against the car was excessive. Shut the f*** 
up before I take your to jail too. Get back. She just got run out of the baby. You do not Go away. To arrest her. Girl, do not push me. What is wrong with you? Who did it? I need to know who did it. Who did what? Who tased my mom? She didn't get tased. get tased. Then why was her taser going off over there? Checking the fire, I guess. So then why was there a taser? How about you worry about you? We'll worry about, about your mama. mama. I don't really give a sh. Y'all are so, violating our rights right now. What, which one? You want to act like a big girl? You're going to get treated oh, like a big girl. Right so I drive son to her mom to get her in the see, car. Do, do, do you see how rude they're being? You see how the cops rude? You see how rude? See, this is why they abuse their power to the point where they think they cannot be stopped. They abuse their power. They always abuse their power. I feel like if you're a cop, you're supposed to calm, you're supposed to be calm and collective and de de escalate the situation. So the public, whoever is arrested, can feel like they're comfortable and safe. Like if you're doing this, obviously they're gonna yell back and they're gonna do this, and then you're gonna get mad and do something dumb. Like you have to be as a cop, I feel like if you're serving like as a police department or anything like that, you have to be calm and collective, not doing this and saying this this stuff and that stuff like uh and that she's being respectful to her man man that fucking human just, just like you yeah no she just drive the gun and, I, but i did it twice i'm emotionally invested can i take her yes well yeah. we, we were thinking no. i love it when you do this <laughs> go to the hospital i'm gonna come i'm talking i'm i'm telling you what's gonna happen okay you are very rude taking mom for disorderly yeah. conduct Resistance, stop, halt, frisk. They are now, sir. Officer Dyer states that he is taking Ms. Sherrard to jail for disorderly conduct and resisting. Under Section 39-17-305 of the Tennessee Code, quote, A person commits an offense who, in a public place and with intent to cause public annoyance or alarm, engages in fighting or in violent or threatening behavior, refuses to obey an official order to disperse issued to maintain public safety in dangerous proximity to a fire, hazard, or other emergency, or creates a hazardous or physically offensive condition by any act that serves no legitimate purpose. Further, the statute states that, now quoting again, a person also violates this section who makes unreasonable noise that prevents others from carrying on lawful activities. Mm -hmm. In this instance, Ms. Sherrard's actions did not appear to rise to the level of disorderly conduct because, mm -hmm. although she what? spoke assertively, she did not even raise her voice at Officer Dyer until right before he grabbed her and certainly did not make unreasonable noise, engage in fighting, violent, or threatening behavior, or create a hazard or physically offensive condition. In fact, Officer Dyer's voice was noticeably louder and more aggressive than Ms. Sherrard's was. I promise you. You are not going to break my only, rights right now. You're about to get your rights in the back of my car. You're, you're I said, me? put your hands on the car. You're arresting me for Put what? your hand back up. Hey, don't you put your. In her police report, Officer Simmons. See, this is a point right here. What was the point of arresting her, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, there was no really point to arrest her. She didn't commit a crime. Oh, he said he would just smell my ass. And summarized the encounter oh. differently, stating that after Ms. Sherrard was informed her vehicle would be searched, quote, Sherrard became belligerent with police, screaming and yelling that the police were not going to search the vehicle. Sherrard continued to scream and yell, causing even further disorder. Now, while the behavior described in the police report could potentially support a disorderly conduct conviction, based on the body camera footage of what actually occurred, it seems unlikely that a court would find that Ms. Sherrard could be convicted of disorderly conduct, or that her arrest was even supported by probable cause. As to the resisting charge, according to section 39-16-602 of the Tennessee Code, quote, it is an offense for a person to intentionally prevent or obstruct anyone known to the person to be a law enforcement officer from effecting a stop, frisk, halt, arrest, or search of any person by using force against the law enforcement officer. Now, although the statute requires an individual to use force against a law enforcement officer, section 39-11-106 of the Tennessee Code states that, quote, Quote, mm. force means compulsion by the use of mm. physical power or violence and shall be broadly construed to accomplish the purposes of this title. And in the 1997 case of State versus Isabor, the Court of Criminal Appeals of Tennessee determined that an individual's actions in flailing his arms and struggling in an effort to avoid being handcuffed were sufficient to support a resisting conviction. Accordingly, if Ms. Sherrard physically struggled against the officer's attempts to arrest her, she could potentially be convicted of resisting. However, while the resisting statute also states that now quoting except and then like she was resistant she wasn't really resistant she didn't even do anything 
except as provided in section 39-11-611, it is no defense to prosecution under this section that the stop, frisk, halt, arrest, or search was unlawful. Section 39-11-611 of the Tennessee Code allows individuals to use force in self-defense during an arrest when, now quoting, the law enforcement officer uses greater force than necessary to make the arrest, and the person using force reasonably believes that the force is immediately necessary to protect against the law enforcement officer's use of greater force than necessary. In other words, as the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals explained in the 2007 case of Roberts versus Anderson, quote, Under Tennessee law, an officer's excessive use of force is a defense to a charge of resisting or evading arrest. Accordingly, while Tennessee allows individuals to be convicted of resisting an arrest that is not supported by probable cause, Ms. Sherrard would be able to attempt to defend herself against any resisting charge by arguing that the officers were using excessive force. Wait, it could just, the car can just stay here. <sighs> I mean, the cop was using excessive force. I mean, he was being rude. He was being loud, pulling her hair, doing this. Like, I mean, I'm we'll her see. daughter. I, and I please say, don't, like, it's already like, please don't, because like, I want to go out of jail, and I just had a baby. Uh, and I'm and I feel for you, and I'm not trying to cause you no headache. You just got to understand, we have a job to do. Also, step out. Let's talk. How old are you, man? What are you Eighteen. Doing? Sir? Eighteen. Mm -hmm. And I'm a man. Like you, why you gotta hit my mom like that, bro? What did he get arrested for? I mean, I, I understand what he's saying. Like, why why my son did that to his mom? You know what I'm saying? She didn't do anything. She didn't do anything. She was just what came what what crime did she commit? She didn't really commit any crime. So I, I feel for I feel for him, bro. That's this and that's his mom's. You gonna keep the all right? I tried. I you see, I tried to I'm talk to you like a man. I tried to talk. Why you have to do her like that, bro? Get in the car. Like, I tried. I tried to talk to you. I tried. I tried. I'm not your bro. You see, I tried. You see, I tried to talk to him. How old is he? 18. He's old enough to take a ride. He goes to the big boy jail. Listen, I want you to know how this would have went. Ma'am, I'm gonna have to search your car. Okay. I didn't find anything. Guess what? Have a good night. After Ms. Sherrard's arrest, the officers searched her vehicle and found no marijuana or any illegal contraband. Oh, they also conducted the well child check and found the child in question healthy and happy inside the home. Ms. Sherrard was transported by EMS to a hospital where she was medically cleared and then charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. The officers released Haley and what? Angel's 15-year-old daughter. Wait, how was she resisting arrest though? daughter, who had been handcuffed during the encounter, but Devin was charged with disorderly conduct. On April 19th, 2022, the state of Tennessee dismissed all charges against Angel and Devin. On July 12th, 2022, Angel, Devin, and her minor daughter filed a lawsuit in state court, and the case mm. was removed to federal court on August 11th, 2022. The lawsuit alleged multiple constitutional violations and state law tort claims against the individual officers involved in the encounter, as well as the city of East Ridge. On September 21st, 2023, the Sherrod Sherrard's reached a settlement agreement with East Ridge. Although the amount received by the adult Sherrard's has not been disclosed, due to Tennessee laws requiring court approval of settlements and legal fees for minors, we know that Ms. Sherrard's minor daughter received a settlement of $10,000, with $4,000 okay. of that sum being paid to her attorney. Now, although the population of East Ridge is less than 22,000, the Sherrard's lawsuit is not the only civil rights case that has recently been filed against the city alleging police misconduct, including a case where Officer Dyer Hey, I'm I'm glad that they sued, you know I'm saying because they should, you know I'm saying they should sue, you know what I'm saying just watching the video, they didn't really do anything. The cops just the cops just abuse their power to their advantage because they know they can do that. Then you know what I'm saying only thing bad is going to happen to them is they get fired. They can still go apply to a different department, so it's not like no is accused of using excessive force against a citizen, and Officer Miller is accused of failing to intervene. And another lawsuit alleging that Officer Simmons used excessive force in preventing a patient from leaving a hospital. On December 22, 2022, the East Ridge Police Department fired Officer Simmons for so-called use of force and so-called discourteous behavior during another encounter. On December 29, 2022, it was confirmed that Officer Simmons had been hired by the Bradley County Sheriff's Office less than a week after her termination, as she was reported as the department's first responding officer to a car accident on Christmas Day. In May of 2023, Officer Simmons resigned from the Bradley County Sheriff's Office for undisclosed reasons. No disciplinary action has been publicly reported for the other officers involved in the encounter with the Sherrards. Overall, the East Ridge officers get an F. 
for using unnecessary force against yep. Ms. Sherrard, blatantly misrepresenting Ms. Thank you. Thank you for him saying that. For adult. Thank you for saying that, man, because they did unnecessary force for what? She didn't really need to be arrested. Like, if you didn't find nothing in the car, because she was resisting the arrest? Come on now, bro. Gerard's conduct during the encounter in an apparent was, attempt to manufacture criminality and justify their actions, and seeming to take pleasure in subjecting Ms. Gerard to both physical abuse and emotionally demeaning behavior. Officer Simmons, in particular, seemed to relish misusing her authority, telling Ms. Gerard, and I quote, sucks to be you, when she revealed that she could not fit in the backseat of the police vehicle, and openly admitting that she was quote-unquote emotionally invested in seeing Ms. Gerard be processed, despite the fact that she had not committed any crimes. There are too many issues with the officer's behavior in this encounter for us to discuss all of them, but on the whole, they remained unprofessional, aggressive, and cruel throughout the interaction, and likely violated the constitutional rights of all of the present members of the Sherrard family. Ms. Sherrard gets an A-, minus because while she was mm -hmm. mistaken about the legality of Officer Dyer's decision to run her tags, she opposed a potentially illegal search of her vehicle, fought the charge against her in court and took proper legal action against the officers after the encounter. That's Although good. the search of her vehicle That's may good. have been lawful if Officer Dyer actually smelled marijuana, given the clear lack of honesty in the way the East Ridge PD represented other aspects of the encounter and the absence of marijuana in the vehicle, it is more than plausible that Officer Dyer was simply lying about the odor, which would make the search clearly unconstitutional. Beyond that, the physical you force- know. You never know, he could have been lying. He could have been lying. He could. Have, I mean, sometimes cops do lie just because they think they can lie just because and they have a verbal abuse gun, that Ms. So. Sherrard and her family were subjected to during this altercation was inexcusable. And I commend the Sherrards for filing a lawsuit to attempt to hold these officers accountable for their reprehensible actions. Let us know if there's an interaction or legal topic. Anyways, man, that's gonna wrap up the video, man. If you guys like that video, man, like subscribe, share, man. The original link will be down below in the description, down below. I'm out.